All right, my name is Tyler Tice. I'm a physical therapist at Physical Therapy First. I have a presentation today um, diving into the research uh, based on the usefulness of manual therapy for conservative management of thoracic outlet syndrome. So let's start with what thoracic outlet syndrome is. It's um, basically a term that we use to describe a group of disorders. Um, it comes from compression of the neurovascular bundle, kind of in our um, exiting the thoracic outlet, kind of in this um, neck armpit area. We have the brachial plexus, the, sub, um, the subclavian artery and vein, as well as the axillary artery and vein that is part of these structures. And when you get compression to these areas, it can result in uh, various symptoms down the arm. Um, pallor, um, numbness, tingling, weakness, atrophy, and, and of course, pain. So TOS is three to four times more likely in females. We're going to see it a lot more in females over males. This could be due to anatomical variations with uh, breast tissues, lower sternum. Um, there could be a hormonal influence um, that contributes to this, um, causing some maybe increased laxity. Um, exertional thoracic outlet syndrome, though, we're going to see that more in males. We'll get into what that is later. And then NTOS, which is neurogenic thoracic outlet syndrome, is much more common. We're going to see this way more than vascular TOS. So there's different types of TOS. We have neurogenic and vascular. Neurogenic, uh, we call NTOS. It's clearly the most common. This is when the, when the nerves get compressed and get compromised. So um, clearly, more people will have this, 84 to 95%. You're going to see symptoms such as numbness, tingling, pain down the arm, um, arm fatigue, heaviness, weakness with grip, and um, all five fingers will be, can become numb. Now, vascular TOS, this is the blood, sh the, um, the blood vessels are going to be compromised here. So we have the veins versus the arteries. The veins are a little bit more common, 6 to 14% of all TOS cases. Uh, you're going to see some compression of the subclavian vein or the axillary vein. This is where the exertional TOS comes in. So due to excessive activity, uh, throwing, swimming, weightlifting, things overhead um, that might cause um, co compromise to the vein there. And then we have arterial TOS, uh, m not common at all, 2 to 4% of all TOS cases. Um, some symptoms of this, pulsating or a tender pulse underneath the clavicle. Uh, different blood pressures between between arms, and then you'll see color changes in the hands and positive hyperabduction and ADSEN special tests, which we'll get into um, later as well. So some causes of TOS. Uh, we can be born with um, a structural anomaly, an anatomical anomaly that might lead one to develop TOS. So such as a cervical rib, we have an extra rib. Um, our C7 transverse process is elongated, so it's longer. It might um, get into that space where those um, blood vessels are and those nerves are. This can come from a traumatic event, such as whiplash from a car accident, um, a fall where it can lead to a clavicle or a rib fracture. Again, um, something happens in that area. It can decrease the space or cause a, a biomechanical dysfunction that leads to uh, compression of these structures. Or this can be acquired from something. Definitely postural changes, um, repetitive activities we talked about, but there could also be a tumor growth in, uh, um, in that area. There can be bony changes. Um, someone could, you know, around the time of, of birth, it can be more common, and then someone can develop complex regional pain syndrome as well. With this. So I wanna go over the entrapment sites. So we can kind of split up this thoracic outlet area into three distinct um, parts. First one's the interscalene triangle. So the space between the scalenes, between the anterior scalene and the middle scalene, uh, we have the brachial plexus comes out of here as well as the subclavian artery. Um, so if our scalene muscles can get thickened or um, hypertrophy a little bit, then that can potentially put some compression on these structures. A little bit lower, we have the costoclavicular space. So this is between the clavicle and the first rib, along with the subclavius muscle will make up the borders of it. And again, we have the brachial plexus, that those are the nerves coming through this, this space along with the subclavian artery and the subclavian vein. Um, 
this space can narrow with trauma, and as the clavicle moves up and down, as we move our arm up and down, um, it could potentially put some um, compression on these structures if the space is narrowed. And then we have the subcoracoid space. So underneath that coracoid process um, of our scapula, and, and this is where the brachial plexus, so the nerves will run through here as well, uh, as well as the axillary artery and the axillary vein. You have the pec minor kind of over top of these structures. So a tight pec minor, a hypertrophy pec minor, a, a scarred down pec minor. Um, and as we move our arms overhead, that area can now get compromised and those structures can get, um, get compressed down on. So here's a, a nice visual of those three spaces. Top one being the inner, um, the, the inner scaling space the middle one being the costoclavicular space, and then that bottom one being that um, subcoracoid space. And then we have a visual of the brachial plexus just to, just so people can see what, how intricate this, this nerve system is coming out of our spine. Um, as you see where the first rib is, we have the trunks of our, of our brachial plexus, the superior, middle, and inferior trunk, and then a kind of split into our anterior and posterior division. So in those areas, that's where the um, compression could occur. And therefore you can see as those nerves exit down the arm, various nerves can be affected based on where that compression is occurring. So wanted to now get into our physical therapy examination uh, when it comes to someone that we think has TOS symptoms. So. First thing we have to think about is our red flags. Someone comes in and they have a spontaneous onset of this. They have a pulsating um, pulse under their clavicle. It's tender pulse under their clavicle. This can be a possible aneurysm and we have to be aware of that. If there's a lot of um, blood pressure differences, if there's a big blood pressure difference between sides, um, someone has like really cold fingers that became spontaneous, again, this is uh, this could be a arterial related lack of blood flow. We might want to refer them to their doctor and potentially the emergency room. And then, don't forget about a pancos tumor in the area um, that could be co potentially compressing down, uh, narrowing that space, and compressing these structures. And then consider our yellow flags as well. So as people with people with these symptoms, it is frustrating. They're usually dealing with these for a while. They're unsure why. They might start having a nociplastic pain phenotype, which means their central nervous system's undergoing changes and they're, they're gonna have a heightened sensitization to these um, symptoms. There's some comorbidities that we might have to take into account that can um, play a role with our management. Um, breathing, um, lung-related pathologies such as asthma, COPD, um, there's also someone with a, uh, who might have had a spinal fusion, might have some decreased mobility in this area, and that might be something that we want to intervene with, um, but definitely have to know about it. And then, like I talked about before, people are kind of undergoing a lot of, um, or, manage, or dealing with a lot with these symptoms, and there can be stress along with it. There can be some other psychosocial concerns that we have to um, consider as well. So as we go through our um, PT examination and we look at cervical and thoracic um, motion and we look at shoulder motion, shoulder strength, and we look at joint mobility, we have to kind of determine, are these symptoms going down their arm coming from the thoracic outlet or somewhere else? So we have to um, kind of determine, is this a cervical cord compromise versus is this a spinal nerve root compromise? Um, or is this more of a peripheral nerve entrapment, um, being the median nerve, ulnar nerve, radial nerve? So we have to do our testing to kind of differentiate and determine which nerves um, and where the entrapment site is, and that will help us help help us uh, know how to manage this better. And then we want to look, of course, at our potential causes and drivers of of these symptoms. Was this something that we talked about was from birth? Uh, was there a recent trauma or do they do some type of repetitive activity? And then consider the double crush syndrome, meaning they are there's an entrapment site going on at the, the thoracic outlet, but as well as peripherally down in the um, distal arm as well.